Okay, everybody. I think we're going to get started here. Um, at least the people that I see on my screen, can you hear me? Just kind of wave your wave your hand a little bit. Okay, very good. Um, and participants, okay, people, okay, great, 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 great. So we're going to get started here. Um, as you can see, and as you know, by the title of the webinar, we're doing a presentation from the Manhattan Borough President's Office on how schools can apply for ResOA funding to our office. And during the presentation, I'll also talk about a little bit about um, the city council as well, because we kind of have a parallel process, but we do have, you know, we have different um, applications. So um, I'll, I'll touch upon that. And then I will, if that, you know, if that raises any questions, we'll, we'll be here to answer questions at the end. We're gonna stick right to the, to ending at six o'clock. And at some point, I'm hoping that the borough president himself will will pop in and say a few words. Um, hello, borough budget director Amy Slattery. How oh, are you? hello. It's very nice to see all of you. Can I jump in and say a couple yes, words? Yes, please. Please um, do. Well, I want to welcome all you wonderful school leaders. I am just uh, so grateful for what you are doing for young people in this borough. It is so hard to run a school right now. And I know that the budget is gotta be one of the greatest sources of stress for you. And that often um, it's hard to innovate because you need to buy equipment or upgrade a space. And um, SCA and school facilities don't provide that. Um, or maybe you just need to take care of basic needs uh, I don't know, having a functioning sound system in an auditorium. And again, uh, uh, SCA and school facilities aren't, aren't helping on that. Um, maybe you are really thinking a lot about technology and um, need new equipment to help your young people uh, embrace emerging technologies. Um, there, there, there's lots of situations where I know it's very, very hard to get that 50 or 100,000 or 125,000 that you need. And luckily uh, we're here to help. Uh, we have, we have uh, capital money designed just for this purpose. And we love supporting schools. We do it every year, but it's surprising that there are a lot of schools who don't apply. And when I've asked principals and superintendents, why not? It basically comes down to they just didn't know how or didn't know that even even it was an option. And so we wanted to, to help solve that problem and do a little session for you tonight so that you know um, how you can apply and what you can apply for. And honestly, it's um uh it's it's not complicated, as you'll see. So um I'm gonna pass it back to the experts, but I'm just thrilled that you're all here and um looking forward to getting your applications. Thanks so much, everybody. And thank you, VP Levine. We appreciate your time. Um, so I'm going to get started. Um, my tip, you can go to the next slide. Great. Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, and just, just in case you didn't notice, we're going to be recording this session and we'll be distributing it and posting it to our website. So anybody that missed it uh, will will be able to see. And then we'll also talk during the presentation about how to get a hold of us directly at, beyond this. So um, we just heard from the from the borough president. So now we're gonna like we're gonna uh, go right into the presentation here. And um, as you can see, we have goals from the presentation goals of the presentation. But I just sort of want to. Um, to remind schools that um, we're talking about this, we have these funds because the New York City Charter mandates a certain amount of capital, capital, capital be allocated to each and every borough president. It's a formula driven um, allocation uh, that differs by borough. Um, and it's um, a function of both the size of the borough, the, ge the geographic size, as well as population. So. Uh, what Manhattan, what you may or may not know is that um, we get the fourth lowest um, allocation amounts in Manhattan. Um, the largest is Brooklyn, then Queens. Actually, sorry, the other way around. Uh, largest is Queens, 
then Brooklyn, then the Bronx, then Manhattan and Staten Island. So, but we make the most of what we got, what we have. And as you can see, we use this capital funding to support not just schools, but other city agencies like parks and libraries and transportation projects. But then we also use the funding to support nonprofits, um, specifically cultural institutions, and of which we have many, many in Manhattan. Um, and back to schools, um, since um, BP Levine has been in office as the borough president, we, we've been through two budget cycles now, and we've um, historically dedicated about a third of our budget to schools. Um, that might vary this year, depending on what our number is. And we don't know our number um, until uh, the budget is released in, in January. Um, so hopefully, hopefully it'll be a good year. Um, so throughout the rest of the presentation, we're gonna provide information about what is ResOA and what are some examples of eligible projects. We're gonna um, hear directly from the school construction authority who really is the, um, the overarching um, agency that manages all of these projects. Um, and um, the the we, we make our allocations directly to them. And then we're gonna talk about our specific process, the Manhattan Borough President's Office. Next slide, the application, sorry. Okay, so our process is pretty simple. Um, if you go onto our website, there's a funding tab. And um, in the funding tab, there will be a number of links, but there will be a link to what is our grants portal. And when you go, when you log on to the grants portal, each and every school is going to have to create a profile. And if you have a profile already created, it should, it, whether or not it's created or not, it should be in the principal's name. And they're the ones with the login. If login information has been lost, and it and it typically is, you can just reach out to us and we can reset passwords. It's it's all very easy. But it does sort of encourage you to, to apply early and not wait till the last minute just because of, you know, login issues at the end can really be a pain for everybody, yourselves most of all. Um, and um, regardless of who fills out the application, um, it has to be given the blessing or approved by the principal. So if a, if a, a PTA president perhaps fills out the ap application on behalf of the school, we're gonna have to get notification in some way, whether it be an email or a phone call, email is easiest, um, letting us know that they are on board with, with the same project. So, and in doing so, you're going to want to reach out to SCA, the School Construction Authority, who can tell you if the work can be done, and if so, um, generally how much it'll cost, because that's that's really important. And something you might think is um, astronomically expensive might be less than you think, but most likely the other way around. Um, but still, cost is very important because we need to be realistic when we make allocations, because if we don't do it for the right amount, projects will just stall. And then the third step is to complete the application. And um, generally speaking, if anyone on this um, on this webinar has done the application before, it'll be nearly exactly the same this year. You could probably even just carry forward a lot of the, you know, at least the organizational information. And it's a pretty quick application, honestly, as long as you've done your homework in advance by reaching out to SCA, getting, you know, making sure that the work that you're proposing is eligible and that they've given you a quote, you could probably fill out the application in, you know, an hour, maybe two. It's pretty simple. Okay, next. Oh, and we don't need to go back, but a very important thing to remember is make sure that you hit submit um, when you're done with the application. You'd be surprised how many schools and, um, you know, other organizations forget to do that. And if, if it's not actually submitted, we're not able to review it because it won't show up as a submitted application. So this right here, that was just a screenshot of what the grants portal will look like when you log on through our website. So um, this is just sort of for your information so you know you're about in the right place, that you are in the right place when you get there. And it has our contact information. Um, and we have contact information at the end of the presentation as well. Uh, next slide. Okay, here are some tips. Um, 
One, yeah, I mean, if you're on this webinar, you've already received our funding notifications, but none, nonetheless, um, you and you know any of your peers should sign up via our website for our newsletter in order to receive funding notifications and communications of all kinds from our office. Um, as I mentioned before, it's really, you know, it's prudent to start your, ampl your application with ample time so you can submit it and, you know, get it in and then there's no last minute uh, glitches that you're, you know, scurrying around for. Um, and we are going to be opening our application in mid-December. Our, our goal is to open it next week. So check back um, by mid next week. If it's not open, check back by the very end of the week and we should be ready to go. Um, as I mentioned before, it is absolutely imperative that you obtain project costs from the School Construction Authority. Oftentimes um, a school or really, or like a PTA or a, like an affiliated group will be tempted to get quotes from other sources. Maybe they have a parent who's an architect or works for a company and they think they're doing something that's helpful by getting a quote from another source. But um, really all that matters is is what the SCA say, says it costs because that's that's what we have to go with. So, um, so outside estimates, if you get them, great. But it's like I said, you have to get the actual quote that you give to us from SCA. And then just remember if you're if you're proposing bigger projects like you know in a new HVAC system or some other broader technology system, you want to remember you want to keep in mind that there could be other costs associated with it, like electrical upgrades. And again, as long as you're talking to SCA, they will help you, they will talk you through all of that. Next slide. Okay, so um, uh, most uh, many times uh, schools request technology, so like computers, laptops, um, smart boards, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we just want you to kind of get a realistic sense on how long this might take to get to you. Um, generally speaking, it could take up to a year, and SEA will talk about this a little bit more, but it can take up to a year before it's delivered and installed. So make sure that your staff is planning accordingly. If you're, if you get our award letter in July or August, don't think that that, you know, those new computers are showing up in September. Um, it, the, the, it'll take some time from there. Many schools in New York City are co-located in one building. There could be one or more schools. And if your project is, say, for an auditorium upgrade or something, something that up, that um, affects in all the schools, we need to get some type of um, indication from all the principals of the relevant schools that they've they've signed off on the project and they 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 you know consent to have that project done as well. That's a very common thing, and um, generally speaking, it's it's not hard to get because you know these are all good things. Um, another thing, and we're going to touch upon this in another slide too, is um, we're not the only source of reservoir funding. There's there's the city council, of course, and then there's also your state elected officials. So it's a really good idea to know who all of your elected officials are and what their application processes are and how you can approach them and, and how you apply to them as well. So um and if you have a bigger project, if for instance, you know, if it's, it's a project that costs several hot th thousand dollars, if not more, um, you have a better chance of getting it funded if you're going to say the borough president and your council member, or maybe even if it's a couple council members, if the school serves a couple district, if all, all of us can work together, we can put our money together and we can, you know, fund some big projects together and help them to move forward. And then, then this is is our stipulation because we have the whole, entire borough of worth of schools, we can really only consider one application for school per school. So every school has got more than one you know major need, of course. But um, in any given year, we ask that you you know think about this, um, perhaps you know meet as a group and determine what's your most pressing need and to, to have that be the one that you request for funding. If you submit more than one 
and you don't let us know which is your priority, we're just probably honestly going to choose to review the one that's for the least, the, the lowest dollar amount. Okay, next slide. Okay, here's more tips. So the application deadlines for the city council and borough presidents are different. Um, I honestly don't know why that is, but it is. Um, and I used to work at the city council, so that that's the way it has always been. Our deadline is a month to the day earlier than the city council's. Our deadline is February 22nd at 5 p.m. The city council's deadline is August 22nd at 5 p.m. Now that is actually the date that the um, that OMB has stipulated for um, what we call non-city capital, which are nonprofit organizations. That that's the date the cap grants they use cap grants to apply. That date that's the date that that closes. We as an office choose to keep to those deadlines. So all schools, all agencies, all nonprofits have to submit their application to us by five o'clock on February 22nd. If by chance you miss that date and you're freaking out and you really need to get, you know, $200,000 worth of laptops for your school in the next budget, have no fear. You still have another month to apply to the council. You just can't apply to us. Um, and as, as this mentions, a lot of um, council members, borough presidents don't use participatory budgeting. But council members do, and school projects often make it on the, the PV ballots. So you should talk to your council member about that process. Um, and Manhattan schools should also um, reach out to the Manhattan delegation. That is um, the group of Manhattan council members and the New York City Council speaker for, um, for consideration for funding, especially for larger pro projects. That process runs through the council and through your local council member. I can help, you know, on a case-by-case -case basis, I can talk you through that if that's something that's relevant to you and you don't know how that works. Um, I'm happy to do that just because I used to work for the council when Mark was a council member. So um, I, I know how that process works. Uh, we often get asked this question, charter schools um, have to apply th through cap grants, which is the very large application that's administered by OMB, which is the Office of Management and Budget that nonprofits use as well. So that is a different process. We're gonna be doing our info session on the nonprofit and other, you know, all other city agencies other than schools. We're gonna be do the, doing that in a week from today, uh, December 14th. So if you're a charter school and you realized, oh, the rest of this presentation is not gonna be applicable to me, Please come back in a week and we can we can um, give you information then. <laughs> and then very importantly, um, we take meetings with every school, every organization that requests one. So by all means, you should request uh, a meeting with the budget office. We're available to meet with you. We generally do 20 minute to half hour meetings per school or per project. And we can talk you through the application process. It's very good for us to kind of hear your pitch and for you to make the case for why you need this funding. And so we will have a meeting request form posted on our website this month by, by the end of December. We're hoping to have it up possibly next week, but no promises, but definitely by the end of December. And meetings will start in the beginning of January after the new year. And you can re request specific dates and times. Okay, next. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, okay, so this is just our general timeline. Um, a lot of this, some of this, I guess I've already talked about. Um, in early in December, mid December, we're going to make our application live, and it'll be posted on our website. As I mentioned, the deadline is February twenty second of twenty twenty four. Then come January and February, we do meeting after meeting after meeting with any school that asks um, to hear about your projects. Once we are through the bulk of our meetings, we start reviewing applications. We receive many, as you can imagine. Um, and then in March of 24, we submit our first round of recommended award awards to OMB. In April, we find out if the we we get it we get a tentative I should have mentioned this before we get a tentative number of what our 
capital budget is going to be in January that we initially work on when the preliminary budget is released. Then when the executive budget is released, we get our final number. And so at that point, we're gonna know whether we get a little bit more over our preliminary number or God forbid, if we have to make cuts. Hopefully, I've not yet had to make cuts. I hope never to have to make cuts. Um, I've gotten more more money every year and I hope, I hope that trend continues. But um, nonetheless, we know our final number after exec is released. And then we submit our final final list to OMB in late April, late April, maybe early May, but nonetheless, April, May timeframe. Then after that, the city council continues to negotiate the budget with, with the mayor's team and the office of management of budget. And then the budget is finally adopted by the end of June. And then over the summer, we start to send out our award letters to schools. Okay, next. If I didn't mention this already, we're gonna do question Q&A at the end. So feel free to start dropping any questions you have into the Q&A feature, and then we'll, we'll go through them all at the end. So what happens after budget adoption? Very important. So all of our awards to schools are directed to, as I've said, said this before, but directed to and managed by the School Construction Authority. The SCA then determines, and they will correct me if I'm wrong on any of this, if projects are going to be assigned to the Department of School Facility or, or anybody else other than themselves. And then a, a bidding process ensues, et cetera, et cetera. And what's important to realize, if you don't know all this already, if you're a new school, if you're an, or an applicant for the first time, the funding is not added directly to your school budget. So therefore, you are not going to be the one purchasing the goods or contracting the services. You're going to receive notification of what the, your funding amount is via Principles Weekly, and then you will you will work directly with SCA beyond that, um, approximately the last week of November. Okay. Next. Okay. I'll just go through this. I kind of I kind of talked about this before, and this is really more. SCA's process, but like I said, the budget is adopted by the end of June. So July 1, SCA is really reviewing all their the allocations that they've they've gotten and they start to, you know, begin to do the contracting process. Um, they then compare it to the September plan and they work with the OMB and start um, getting vendors for each project. You're gonna get an email via Principles Weekly, November, December, and then most likely in January of the following year is when you're gonna to start to either um, set up visits or actually you know, begin implementation of, of your project. So I think that takes me to the end of my presentation for now. At which point now we're going to turn it over to the experts, which which uh, is the School Construction Authority, to talk about. They're going to talk more, I think, pretty sure about eligibility and what is an eligible product, project, what's not, processes on their end. And then we're going to, after SCA, we're going to hear from two schools that submitted um, successful applications, and we're going to hear... Uh, whatever they want to say, what worked well, what didn't work well, things we could have done better, things we did great, feel free. And then at the very end, we're going to turn it over to Q&A. So without further ado. Thank you, Amy. Yeah. I just want to thank uh, Borough President Levine for convening this. So it's really helpful to get a talk to everyone kind of at the beginning of the process and really set expectations. Um, I know a lot of people are probably going to have project specific questions. Feel free to email myself, Brian and John after the meeting. Um, we'll take a look at your projects. If you have any questions about where something is in the timeline, we could uh, provide those details for you offline. Um, it just takes some time to pull out projects, so we don't want to take up time during this call going over that. Um, one second, let me just share the screen. And great. Great. So who, are, who is the SCA? So the SCA um, is an authority commissioned by the state that manages all construction projects for New York City schools. Uh, we are the repository of all ResAway grants. Um, the, the funding is always going to stay with us, and it's our mission to design, construct safe and attractive 
and environmentally sound public schools for children throughout New York City. Um, and this is just really important. It kind of goes back to one of Amy's points. We know a lot of like active parents really want to help schools in estimating costs, but it's really important to come to us because there are a lot of regulations that we have to follow um, being a part of New York City public schools um, that you, private sector parents might not be um, aware of. Um, so what is participatory budgeting? So while the borough president doesn't do participatory budgeting, we just always want to touch on this. Um, it's a process Can that- I, Do you have a presentation that you wanted to share or are you just going off of it? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I was sharing my screen. Thank you. Yeah. Can you see this now? Yes. Yeah, great. Thank you, thank you for that, Amy. <laughs> uh, uh, so participatory budget is not an additional stream of funding. Um, we've had some- glitches, I, I, I would say that uh, some pr principals have thought the PB funding and the Res OA funding are two awards. The PB funding and your Res OA grants are the same thing. The PB is just a subset of those Res OA dollars. Um, so just just, just uh, make, make everyone aware that that is the same item. So um, what are typical Res OA projects? For those who are unaware, these are some of our most common projects. Athletic fields, gymnasium, science labs, auditorium renovations, bathroom upgrades, supplemental cooling projects. These make up the vast majority of our projects. Sometimes we'll do smaller items as well, like a hydroponics lab in a room. Um, if you have a D75 school, we'll do like a life skills room. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of other smaller uh, room specific projects we could do in classroom upgrades, but these make up the vast bulk of our projects. So what makes a project eligible? So since FY21, all projects must be a minimum of $50,000. And most of these rules that guide capital eligibility are actually set by the New York City Comptroller. So they're not SCA regulations or really regulations set by any agency. It's from the Comptroller. Um, so all capital projects that are construction must create a permanent enhancement to the facility. Um, outside of construction projects, we also do have equipment purchases. And those must have a minimum lifespan of usually five years, sometimes three. Um, so the five-year ones are usually the STEM cards we order. Uh, but separate from that, we have technology grants, which have a minimum lifespan of three. And those include the standard smart boards, laptops, desk desktops, other um, card, laptop cards that most schools order every year. So what's not eligible? So this is really important. So things we can't order for schools, window air conditioners. This is probably the one we get the most requests for. Unfortunately, we cannot buy window ACs for any school. Um, library books, uh, loose furniture items, um, are not eligible. Uh, photocopier software items are not eligible. Any kind of toner supplies or technology-based supplies, and we can't pay for staffing and programming. Essentially, the SA is, is either improving a space physically or we're buying equipment. So these other items that kind of are a daily thing, we can never purchase these. It has to be a physical improvement to a space or a piece of technology. So uh, we always want to touch on this. It's a uh, resume budgets. So the resume budget is set by the allocation from the elected official. We can always go back if there's not enough funding for something, but it is really difficult. Um, there is an infinite need in the city. Um, and we always want to really make sure that we stress that it's really important for us to stick to budgets. And when we assign consultants, we, we let them know that they have to kind of follow the amount we got from the elected official. Um, if something is underfunded, um, we meet with the principals, discuss the scope, try and reduce the scope. Um, if that's not possible, we will reach out to uh, the elected officials for more funding. Um, but again, that is always difficult. So all SCA managed projects have a 25% soft cost applied to them. Um, this pays for items including the scope, the design of the project, the construction management project, as well as the contingency. Um, ultimately, at the end of the day, uh, OMB releases funding to the SCA not the school's galaxy budget. So this is important because I know sometimes principals have a fear that at the end of June, if they don't spend this money down, that all of a sudden it's gonna be gone. That's not true. The money does last in your budget. Um, just reach out to us um, and we can always confirm that. Um, so some larger projects such as, one second, I my head um, Can you hear me now? Okay. Um, so some larger projects such as athletic field renovations can be funded over multiple years, and that's pretty common. Um, so don't think that the, the, the application you submit is the one and only chance you have to fund the project. 
um, you can work with your other elected officials or fund the project over multiple years. So this is the timeline. So a lot of these things really are out of our control at the very beginning. So January to March, elected officials contact the schools to identify projects. That's this process we're all a part of now. Uh, May to June, the city negotiates the budget. July 1st of this is the start of the fiscal year. Over the summer, you're notified of awards by elected officials. And then July to September, we review and create projects. And then we have to wait for authorization from the Office of Management and Budget to start projects. And this really spans a great deal of time. We could get that approval as early as September or as late as February. Um, so this year, we've actually started reaching out to a lot of schools with SEA managed projects like this month. Like I've had a few dozen meetings with schools this week already to spend previous year construction dollars. This is one of the earlier times we've had in, in recent years. Usually we're not, sometimes we're not able to start those meetings until February or March. We always dislike that, but that real that approval really is out of our control. Um, if you have a technology project, those haven't been approved yet for FY23 as an example. Um, there really is like 10 different rounds of approvals um, we have to wait for. And that's just part of the process, unfortunately. But by the end of March, every item from the FY23 program should be approved and you should be hearing from someone. And if you don't, please always contact me, John and Brian, and we can get that moving along. So um, some average cost for projects, what is really important to everyone here. Um, so all of these are gonna have a low and high. You're gonna be receiving this presentation after the meeting. So I'm not gonna really go through them. The low end is, tends to be more applicable to elementary schools and the high end to your high schools and bigger spaces. Um, so these are just a few example projects, auditoriums, seating and flooring, curtains, AV systems, kind of our common scope of work for auditorium upgrades, uh, gymnasiums, uh, libraries, um, just a few of the other items, science labs, playgrounds, security cameras. Um, you'll get this after presentation. But if you have a specific project in mind, please email us. There might be certain particulars that maybe you don't need a full architect and design team to come out. Maybe you just want a simple like redoing of the floor in the gym, right? you would never ask us $600,000 just to redo the floors in your gym, right? Um, so just please reach out to us and we'll provide those specific details for you. We both wanna make sure you apply for the right amount of money and also don't apply for too much so you're more likely to get the award. So uh, things to do and not do. Always ask us for estimates. It seems crazy, but every year we get emails from every principal across the city asking us for estimates and we really do prefer it that way. It saves everyone a great deal of work when the estimate we provide initially is at least close to what you're going to be spending on the project. Um, prioritize the components of the projects. Um, so it's important, let us know, are you looking to replace your seating and chairs? Are you looking for a supplemental cooling or AC project? Are you looking to replace the curtains? Um, you can use FAMIS for technology prices. It's the same contracted vendors, so that's pretty standard. And one thing not to do is get an estimate from anyone outside of the SCA. Um, there really are a whole host of things we have to do as a public authority um, that manages these funds that private entities might not be aware of. So co-locations and reservoir grants. So I don't want to stay on this too much because I know Amy did um, run by it. Um, it's just always very helpful if you're a co-located school to make sure you're all on the same page when you apply. Um, whenever we have a school where there's like six principals, for example, in a building, um, it can be more work, but if everyone's on the same page, really doesn't cause any delays in our project and we love that. And the last thing we want to do is get in between two different principles with a different idea of how to spend the funds. Um, so it's really great um, for everyone to kind of be on the same page. And I do want to say um, charter schools kind of are usually almost always co-located. If you're a charter school in a DOE building, um, your grants are essentially the same as a regular public schools. But if you're a charter school in a private space, you're going to have to go for that cap grant system that Amy mentioned earlier. Um, so if you're in a public school building, you don't have to use that cap grants application. It's just a simple resume uh, application. And always when submitting your applications, please include the building and the school IDs. Um, we track everything here by building IDs. As long as you let, let us know that, um, we'll always be able to pull up your project and let you know how much funding you have. Um, again, this is just on co-locations. Um, so changes to resume grants. So we can make changes to resume grants. Uh, it's pretty simple. Um, we just have to reach out to the borough president and the council member um, to make the changes. Um, we want to make sure they're always on the same page with us. Um, but if we have everything set and right at the beginning, it does save everyone a lot of work, right? It's a lot of emails, a lot of projects. We want to make sure all the projects are 
correct at the beginning. Um, we kind of have really three kinds of projects, uh, construction, mobile STEM card, and technology. Um, when we're changing between these three buckets, we always have to get OMB approval. So that could kind of delay a project one to three months, depending. So ideally, we have everything correct at adoption um, when we when we when it's submitted. Um, so it's just really helpful to not cause any delays for everyone involved. Um, if we just make sure all the funding is going to the right place. And uh, just is just two examples of a few projects. Uh, this is IS one thirty six of Manhattan and uh, PS sixty one of uh, the Auditorium and Library Upgrade. So I'm going to leave our emails on the screen while I answer some questions. Um, so the slides are going to be available. I think the Manhattan Borough Presence Office is going to send them around. Um, I have a question here about large wall ACs. So we can't do a AC units, but we do do supplemental cooling, which I think might be what you're referring to. Um, public assembly spaces, we always have to put in these split systems because they have a longer lifespan than ACs. Um, but the split systems are very common uh, reso AS from our schools. Um, it's actually what, probably one of our most common is adding these supplemental cooling units to gyms, auditoriums, libraries, cafeterias. Uh, the process of getting an estimate from us, just email me, John, or, and Brian. Um, give us a few details about the project. We want to ask you some more questions, um, but we'll give you the number over email. Uh, and then if you have questions about previous awards, just, again, email us. Uh, if you have the LLW number, great. If you don't, just send us your building or school ID, and we'll look up those projects, and we'll let you know what the status is. Yes, you can submit projects to both the BP and the city council. I know they almost always meet every year to kind of go over which applications they've both received, and they tend to make funding decisions jointly on that. And it is helpful just to make sure you apply send as similar applications into both as possible, just on their ends, they know to flag them with each other. Yeah, I, I can jump in on that. We we do meet with council members one by one. So if if you do have a project and you want to apply to both, Make sure that's clear that we we have a question in our application. Are you also applying to the city council? So that that makes it helpful. But um, that that we can, you know, when we meet with them, we know it's for the same project. But um, but yeah, it's it's a good idea to apply to both of us. We save the questions for after. I think we just kind of answered them as they were coming in. Right? Yeah. Well, so we, we we still have the the principals to hear from. So we might anybody who still has questions, feel free to keep dropping them in. But thank you, Missis, for that uh, great presentation. Everybody, okay. will, like we said, we'll be distributing these powerpoints, so you'll get every all everyone's emails. Yeah, and I'm gonna stick around until after principal. So if there's more questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Okay, great. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Yes. Hi, yeah. my name is Naite. Um, I'm here with the Manhattan Borough President's Office, um, the budget unit. I handle most of your communications with schools and applications, so I'm your go-to girl. Um, so now we're going to turn it over to our schools. We have Principal Yu from Stuyvesant High School, and he'll be the first one going up. So if you can please take it away. That's great. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, <clears throat> share my screen quickly. Um, so in mind, uh, I think, yep, there we go. <laughs> Let me do this. Right. All right, can everyone see my screen? Perfect. So uh, thank you very much. I want to just say thank you to Manhattan Borough President Levine and his entire office and clearly SCA. Um, I wish I would have listened to this when I first applied, because then I would have not done all the missteps that I had. Um, <clears throat> but uh, again, I really appreciate this opportunity. So my name is Sing Yu. I am the principal at Stuyvesant High School, and uh, we were one of the fortunate uh, recipients um, of a Reso 8 grant. Again, uh, this was a really great opportunity for us. Um, and what our proposal was, was a media lab and recording studio. And you know, I think when you think about this process uh, for us before we ever thought about funding really was thinking about the needs of our students. Um, you know, we have a really strong music program and, and fortunately, you know, a few of our teachers 
had some really great ideas about kind of nexus of technology and music uh, and just again, digital content uh, creation. Uh, and so this idea came about that, well, we need a, the physical space to be able to make sure we can do this type of curricula uh, and really think about the ways in which our physical space matches our young people's talent and our staff. And so this idea of a media lab and recording studio really took shape. Um, and for us, it was, again, thinking about what not only Manhattan, but New York City could really um, you know, use, and particularly in getting our young people to be prepared for uh, again, all of the new industries that uh, that are being created. So you can just see here some of the key elements or key points that we we were thinking about. We were not only thinking about current students of Stuyvesant, we were thinking about future students of Stuyvesant, but we were also thinking about the, the, the broader community. Um, our building also is a community center. And so really wanting to think about the ways in which, uh, again, the entire community could, could benefit. Um, I wanted to show you two quick spaces. The project is still in uh, in implementation, so we're there. There's still some uh, pieces being built, but you can see on the left hand side uh, some of the the ceiling and and the, the small studios that are being built. Uh, this space did not look like this necessarily when we first started, but um, what was really great was that uh, we really kept intact what the the actual layout was and then really trying to make refinements because this was a renovation uh wasn't a complete um you know redo of, a, of an entire room so we really wanted to think about the space in which you know we thought about this idea of media lab and recording studio and then the the picture on the right really is the uh, it's a noise counseling just so that you know, the studios individual studios can really get the recording uh and and podcasts that we are wanting to do but um this is Kind of the uh, the near finish of the of the actual lab uh, recording studio, so extremely happy about uh, the progress. Um, you know, I think uh, Amy touched on all of this, and I, you know, again, I wish I would have listened to this maybe two three years ago, and uh, and thinking about this. Um, but just some suggestions because I think uh, this is an ongoing, you know, and and consuming project, you know, in terms of the proposal, because you want to do it well, and you really want to think ahead. Um, so do the prep work. And, and in particular, you know, I think you want to know the details or as much of the details as you can about what you want to do. Um, I think, again, for us, it started with what, what do we want to do in terms of curriculum? What do we want our young people to think about? And then, you know, we worked backwards from there and thinking about, okay, well, we need the physical space. Uh, and thinking about what that might look like, because I, I do think you have to have an idea of, kind of envision what, particularly if it's a space, uh, what do you want it to look like? Because that's going to help you in terms of articulating it in the application, as well as speaking with SCA and thinking about um, the budget. Um, you know, I, I think too, just in terms of the proposal itself, you really want to think about the impact. That is an actual question uh, on the application. You know, what are the benefits not only to your, you know, your students, but also to the to the broader, you know, borough and and, and across New York City, I think, Really thinking about the constituents in general is really important, and you know, again, specifying who those constituents are. Um, another thing, and you know, again, I think money is always tight, and so you want to think about how you're invested in the project. And you know, I think one of the things that we were very fortunate is um, we really mobilized our stakeholders from our parents' association to our alumni to our current students, um, and thinking about the different ways in which we could showcase our investment. Uh, you know, one was to do some fundraisers, but also, again, the, the ways in which we were going to reach out to other council members, uh, think about different grants. Uh, I think, again, typically a lot of these projects, the larger ones, are going to take uh, a few funding sources. And I think you want to showcase that you're willing to do the work um, and and really finding the ways that you could supplement or, or uh, show your investment in, in how important this project is. And then I think, you know, you're always trying to tell a story. And uh, we were very fortunate. Uh, we've had quite a bit of contact with the, the borough president's office. Uh, and I think just being able for them to see the space or see the your school, the things that you're doing and helping them picture uh, what the space is going to potentially look like or what the project's going to look like and how it's going to benefit, again, not only your school, but um, the broader constituents. I think those are really important. And, you know, the fact that uh, Amy had made mention, you can set up these uh, opportunities to to talk about it. I think that's really important because, again, imagine there's so many different applications, but if they can envision that and, and see the benefit, I think is really important. Um, 
some challenges and successes I think are really important as well. <clears throat> Just in terms of the challenges, um, again, I think you got to really familiarize yourself with the process. Uh, I'm glad that they put, you know, creating the account. I didn't, did not know any of that. And, uh, and I think it took me a while just to figure some, you know, figure out who would know this. And, and again, I think once you get your account, you can start looking at the questions because again, there's a word count as well. And you want to be, um, be well ahead of the game in terms of knowing how you're going to write about your, your project. Uh, I think the key contacts with SCA before we actually had looked at the application, we had gone out and got estimates. Uh, and so again, you know, you want to, got to reconcile that. Um, and, and in particular, I think this is a really important piece for us in the media lab. We have very specialized equipment that we would want. So those conversations with SCA are really important um, and thinking about, again, you know, whatever the factors that they need to consider and then what you're envisioning. Uh, and if there's ways to, to find some common ground on that, I think it's going to be important, particularly as you estimate uh, the budget. I think the other thing is just being really patient not only with the process itself, but then again, once the implement, if you are, if you're fortunate enough to get, um, uh, be an awardee, uh, the projects from inception to completion take a lot of time. This media lab, this was our second round of application that we had put forth because it is a, is a bigger project. Um, and recognizing again, you know, this takes time, um, but it's well worth it once you, you know, are able to, to finalize it. I think the success is that once we got kind of the, um, uh, was an awardee the first time. It really got people even more mobilized. Uh, and again, building those relationships with the key contacts. Um, so it made us, you know, it's making us believe that, hey, we're going to do this every year. We're going to apply because we think there's a possibility. Um, and even if, if it doesn't happen that first year, really, again, following through those steps, I, you know, I think it's really important to build the, the momentum for your school community and getting everyone behind it. Um, for us, it was really you know, where do you want people to spend their energy? This was a good one because um, we could all mobilize behind it. And and again, once we got became the awardee, I, yeah, I just remember sharing that information. Our community was really excited uh, and even more motivated to, to seek out additional funding. Uh, and then again, I think, you know, any project, particularly the bigger ones, could take multiple funding cycles. Um, you know, and I think in this kind of in this budget climate, uh, you know, that, that might be the case. I think you want to be very strategic about you know, the amount of money that you're asking for and that there's different ways because a little is better than none. And so, you know, I think that's an important piece, you know, about building the momentum uh, for us, you know, when we were able to tell, we didn't ask for the full amount because it was going to be an exorbitant amount, but we asked for some. And then once you got that, it also showcased for your additional funding sources that you got investments from other sources. So build on that momentum um, because all the challenges, again, you know, they will build up, but if you can get small wins and really get galvanize your community around it, I think will uh, pay dividends. So, uh, and again, my name is Sing Yoom, the principal at Stuyvesant. This is my contact information. If you have any questions uh, specific to just exactly what we went through. Um, and I think for any new you know, school leader or new school that's going through this, um, again, I think uh, it's just getting, getting started is the hardest part. Um, and if you can get as much information as possible, um, it, it's a pretty easy process uh, once you get yourself into it. So I will stop sharing my screen there. Thank you so much, Principal Yu. Next, we're gonna have Principal Daryl Blank. He's the principal of High School of Fashion Industries. So if you can take it away, let me just pin. And... Okay, thank you so much. I don't I don't know if it's possible if I just say ditto, um, but um, I, I you know I did prepare a presentation, so I, I think I'll I think I'll go through with it. Um, so hi everybody, my name is Daryl Blank. I'm the principal at the High School of Fashion Industries. Uh, uh, I just want to thank the Manhattan Borough President's Office. They've been so generous over the years. Um, so it's been a big help to our to our community. Uh, and SCA and DSF always sort of looking out for us. So, uh, you know, I, I, what principal you said in terms of, um, you know, they make it easy for you. So, um, so here, so here's uh, my uh, contributions to the to the presentation. So, just some suggestions and personal tips. Tips. Um, I don't think you should just fill out like a form or just send an email. I think it's very useful to. Uh, schedule a meeting with the borough 
uh, Manhattan Borough President staff, so they get to know your you, your school, your proposals. Uh, so it really, uh, you know, they get to know you and your community. Uh, so you know, it's always good to have a, a face to a name. Uh, so, so I thought that was really helpful to go to the office and just to to meet with them um, and to look for proposals that could really positively impact your students. And I, I think it's important to get to know the priorities of the Manhattan Borough President's, President's Office uh, to make sure that, you know, that you, what you're proposing is sort of aligned to, uh, you know, their vision for Manhattan and, uh, and what they want to accomplish, you know, in their administration. And then just be as detailed as possible with your uh, proposals and the scope of work and the prices. Uh, you know, you you want to really get, you know, like if you don't really know that stuff, then how can they sort of support it? So I, I would get to, you know, work with SCA to get down to those details about how much everything is and what you want to accomplish. Uh, the challenges, right? Uh, you know, just being like, like as principal, you said, just being realistic um, about, you know, what would make the most sort of like positive impact in your community. And the cost, we know uh, funds are, are f there's a finite amount of funds. So you really wanna be asking for something that will, uh, you know, have that the greatest impact for, for the bucks that you have. Um, once again, SCA and DSF are great. Um, and so just communicate with them about, um, you know, getting an estimate for the project. There are so many schools to serve. Uh, so you just gotta, again, those emails were sent out. Uh, I've I've worked I've uh, communicated with Brian many uh, many many times over the years, uh, and so they're always so great about getting back to you. So uh, there are just a lot of schools out there. So you want to sort of the uh, the squeaky wheel gets you know gets the oil as they say, um, and then you want to I think obtain consensus from all the school stakeholders. Right, you're trying to find projects that students, family, and staff can all agree on and benefit from. Uh, you want to keep them in the loop of like sort of what you're applying for uh, and just make sure that everybody's on the same page. So like when you, you know, if you get the grant, right, it's like not a, not a necessarily a surprise and like they knew that you were applying for this and, uh, you know, and then so you don't have those situations where like, oh, why did you not apply for that, right? And the, give them opportunities to sort of uh, have everybody's voice heard. Um the, the borough president's office is so helpful. Amy, Nelson, uh, Maite, just they always respond to emails with your questions. Um, they're very flexible with the scheduling, with meetings and calls, and they're they're just very interested in uh, positively impacting your community. So uh, if you do the communication with them and reach out to them, they will they will certainly meet you way past halfway the halfway. Um, we did a water bottle filling station. I remember speaking with the group, uh, how it was basically a journey to find clean drinking water at the high school fashion industry. So um, this this was, you know, a great project to improve the health of our student body um, with the access to clean drinking water. It also dealt with sustainability to minimize our footprint with like the plastic water bottles, which was something I know the Manhattan Borough president said that they, you know, that that was a priority for them. And I, I came into the proposal with very specific locations, like on this floor, on this side, and sort of, you know, again, they can't get to every building, but I, I bet you they had a pretty good understanding of sort of like what our building was like and, and the journey of trying to find clean drinking water at the school. And then lastly, I just had a couple of photos there. This was, if I can, uh, that was sort of like the the before, you know, just like, you know, a desert, uh, you know, looking for water. And, uh, and then now, you know, sort of like we have these filling stations, basically everywhere. Uh, a student cannot like sort of go anywhere on, you know, in the building and not, you know, get the, get some access to clean drinking water. So it's really wonderful to see, you know, students and staff. Uh, so it was really, um, you know, and, and it, it's been great, like the quickness of the project, you know, that that we basically, they're, they're all in. And uh, so it's really, it's really been great. So I'm really thankful to, 
the borough president's office and SCA and DSF and really just the whole process making it so easy. And it's really had a really positive impact on the school. So uh, I didn't I didn't have a slide like uh, about my contact, but it's just D blank, D B L A N K, and uh, you know please reach out and uh, happy to help and 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 pay it forward to help you through the process. All right. All right. Thank you so much, Principal Blank. It was a wonderful presentation, both Principal Blank and Principal Yu. Now we're gonna move to Q and A's, although we will already were answering as we were going along the way. But um, just to highlight some questions that we received, um, we had um, a question such as, what if a previously funded reservoir project needs repair? For instance, a rooftop greenhouse has a broken heating system. So if we had completed that job, sorry, this is a bit from the SCA. If we had completed that job recently, it should still be under warranty. However, um, after that warranty ends, uh, the maintenance of all the reservoir uh, projects is still under DSF, just like all the other items within a school building. Okay. The next question is, oh, this is really good. This is this is really great information. How do you suggest the community boards help the schools through the process? I can jump in on that one just because, you know, we also oversee, these are our two primary functions of this office actually is uh, capital budget allocations and community boards. Um, so each community board um, every year puts together um, their district needs assessment, um, which is their recommendation on what they would like in the city capital budget. Some of it is very like large scale things, and then some of it is very small scale things, which can include schools. Um, how do you suggest community boards help the schools through this process? Um, you know, that differs by school. Um, if you're a community board member asking this question, you could invite, um, you know, the big schools to come present at the community board to talk about their projects. You could go to them. Um, you could invite them to the um, Youth and Education Committee meetings. Um, and if you're looking for more specific guidance, you can reach out to us and I can put you in touch with um whomever is the community board rep that um, is associated with your with your school or your area. Um, and then before we turn to the next question, I was realizing that I never did introductions of our team in the beginning. <laughs> so in case you're wondering who I am, I'm Amy Slattery. I'm the budget director for the Manhattan Borough President. And I thank you all for joining us and for all of our wonderful presenters. I'm going to toss it over to Maite and then Nelson just to say hi. And all of our contact information will be presented at the end. But go ahead and then I'll go to the next question. Okay. So like I said, my name is Maite Carino and I'm the Capital Projects and Budget Analyst. And I'm the one that would be your go-to person, like I said, when it, when dealing with school capital project funding. Nelson Adino, I'm the go-to person for nonprofits and city agencies as well. Great presentation, presenters. Yeah, the principals, thank you. You you really yeah. hit a lot of, <laughs> hit everything on the head there, hit the nails on the head, so thank you. Can I hear you, Amy? Oh, you can hear me? No? I could hear you, Amy. Oh, okay. Um, You can hear me now? So we have two more questions that, and any other questions that we haven't gotten to or you want to follow up, reach out to us afterwards because we're at 602. So I wanna just go through these and then we can you know, continue any conversation in our individual meetings and over email, et cetera. So this is a big one. Uh, when applying for a large project with a high price tag that might take multiple funding cycles, happens all the time, how do you split up the project? Is it best to think about it in phases? Um, and does the initial application include an awareness of the larger scope or should it just be for phase one? Okay, sort of answered your answered yourself in your question, but yes, if it is a large project, let's say it's like an auditorium renovation. If you can recall, recall back to Macisa's slides, it had some dollar ranges and these are some really big ranges. So um, I think if you can break it up into phases, um, that's extremely helpful because it makes the price tag a little less scary. And it also 
it makes us feel like if we're only going to be putting in a smaller amount in one year and then the next, it makes us feel like we're um, chipping away at it in a way that makes sense instead of just putting a random, you know, ear marker in there. It, it helps us if it ties to say a phase. Um, and, um, but in the application itself, you should talk about the larger scope of the project and that, you know, in this fiscal year, which we're talking about fiscal 25, I think, no, no, 24, 24. Five. Five? Yes. Um, you can say in fiscal Ooh. 25, we're asking for phase one, which is X, Y, and Z for a price tag of, of you know, whatever. Um, but then, you know, the total project is this, and we intend to keep applying to the to the BP and to the city council in the coming years. And, and Amy, just to add, that's probably a good point to, to engage SCA in that sort of big project, uh, phasing it out and sort of what works, what's best, I thought. Yeah, Amy, this, yeah, this is Brian at the SCA. You know, some larger projects can't be phased. Mm. Um, you know, so you can phase an auditorium, you know, you can do a sound mm. system and curtains, mm and try to come back and do seats at a later date. You can't phase a, a, a science lab. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you can't fund half a science lab. Sure. So what we, we strongly recommend is, if you know you're applying for a large high cost job, because you came to us and we told you that, it was gonna be very expensive, that to make sure the borough president and the council member are on board and they understand that. So they don't put money in and we come back and tell them you don't have nearly enough here. So, you know, it's important that that's known ahead of time and that commitment is given ahead of time that we're going to continue to fund this. That's very helpful. Yeah, thank you. And when we meet with you, we can we can talk about that in greater detail, too, which um, the next question, and I think this will be our last. And again, we will continue to meet, although there is a DSF question, which I might let uh, ask SCA to jump in on. But um this question is, if you have multiple smaller projects, can you submit them as a combined project or should you submit them separately with one to the BP and one to the council? This might be, again, a case by case. My personal preference would be is if you do submit them separately to the BP, if they're for, say, under $100,000, um, if you have two things, two or more things for under $100,000, to submit one to us and one to the city council, I think that's just cleaner makes a lot more sense and it will be much more likelier to get funded that way. I think if you're cobbling together a bunch of things that one might be way too confusing and untenable for SCA to be able to sign off in its totality, but also um, uh, I think just a, a lot of pieces would get lost. So I think to the extent that you can, can keep things discreet um, to what they are per, per application, I think that's wisest. And then that last question that I was referencing is from Paul Clark, who says, is DSA the Division of School Facilities and who is the contact? Uh, yes, that is. Um, so usually just go to your custodial engineer. Um, if they can't fix the issue, they can escalate it to like uh, their supervisor to the DDF for the area. And we'll go from there. And if, and if DSF can't handle it, they make referrals to SA all the time. But the standard process is just to like escalate it up. Uh, the chain. All right. Well, thank you. I think we are, we've hit the end here. Thank you so much for everyone's time, for all the attendees and for all of our wonderful presenters. Um, you've made this, you know, the content so much richer for sharing your experiences and answering all, all of the questions. So um, we will we'll be in touch. Please reach out to us with any questions and meeting requests, and we'll be talking to you soon. Take care. Bye.